The venue, a giant factory where they make glass bottles. The investment, billions, almost 22 billion. Funding what they say will be a new era, fueling growth while cutting carbon emissions. Clean energy is a golden opportunity for our country, a chance to bring security and hope to working people, relight the fires of renewal in those areas that got hit so hard by deindustrialization. Including this area, stretching between North Cheshire and Merseyside, which will become a carbon capture cluster under the plans announced today, where hydrogen will be produced to power industry with infrastructure and tech on a scale we've not done before to capture the carbon that fuels the climate crisis. Once the carbon has been captured, instead of being pumped out into the atmosphere, it will be piped under the sea and then stored. According to the government, the billions the Prime Minister announced today will make the UK a global leader in clean energy and green tech and also create thousands of well-paid jobs in this area and also at a second site in Teesside. What's not to like, you might think? According to some, quite a lot. So your campaign group is called... High Nut. As Why opposed to, is that? As opposed to High Net, which is the scheme that they're proposing here, which is based around the production of blue hydrogen, with theoretically to decarbonise industry in the North West. Which sounds like a great idea, but unfortunately it commits us to using twice as much uh, fossil fuels in, uh, it, well into the future. So it'll continue the extraction of oil and gas, uh, and it depends massively on, on subsidy, uh, government subsidy, you know, 22 billion in this case, going on decades into the future when the cheapest alternatives are all renewable energy now. He's not the only skeptic. Some scientists and campaigners claim the kind of hydrogen they'll make here, blue hydrogen, will lock the UK into fossil fuel use for decades to come. And last month, they wrote to Ed Miliband as energy secretary ahead of today's announcement calling for a change of plan. The best advice I've got is from the Climate Change Committee, the independent watchdog that advises me and advises Parliament. They say carbon capture is essential if we're to meet our carbon budgets. It's essential if we're to decarbonise. But isn't a lot of the carbon that will be captured carbon that will be made because of the process of producing hydrogen? Well, look, there's different aspects of what's going on here. There's hard to abate sectors like cement that need carbon capture. And then there is a choice that we're making that hydrogen and gas fired power stations with carbon capture are also the right things to do for Britain. And, and let me explain why. We can either carry on burning unabated gas to provide us with flexible power generation, or we can make a different choice, which is to say, if we're gonna carry on using gas where we do do that, we're gonna capture the carbon, not emit it into the atmosphere. If all this sounds familiar, that might be because the last government announced similar plans last year. According to the new government, the difference is the cash to make it happen. Coming in the same week, the UK's last coal-fired power station closed. The promise is a clean power future, even though our use of fossil fuels is not yet in the past. Claire Fallon, so does the government's announcement of these extra billions suggest the upcoming budget is set to be less doom-laden than the Treasury has been suggesting? Well, our economics correspondent, Helia Ebrahimi, is here. Well, this deal is all about getting more investment into the UK, but it brings up three big issues. Firstly, the chronic underinvestment we've had in this country, most acute in recent years. We keep talking about broken Britain. Well, it's crumbling for a reason. Take a look at private and public sector net investment over as a share of our national income, stretching back almost 50 years. Compare that to Germany, we're below. Compare it to the U US, we're below. Compare it to the big spenders, Japan, we're way below. In fact, we're actually the worst performer in the G7. And Jackie, if we focus in on the numbers that were plugged in for the fiscal plans under the Tories, on government spending, from a low base already, government investment set to fall from 2.6% to 1.7%. Now, that is a cut in every single year of this parliament. And if we wanted to roll it back to 2023 levels, Rachel Reeves would have to find £24 billion at the back of the sofa. 
So will the Chancellor find the money in the budget? Well, I think that's quite interesting because she invited a bunch of economics journalists to go see her so she could talk about this deal, talk about what she described as the drumbeat of pro-growth, pro-investment events leading up to their uh, summit in 10 days' time. That's obviously the precursor to the big budget that the government is having. You know, the rhetoric that we've had in recent weeks about difficult decisions has really bummed out business leaders and investors, not to mention their anxieties about tax rate. But in her office, Rachel Reeves was talking about people starting to flock to her. And she was saying that this deal represented a down payment on her intention to boost capital investment. Now, that's the clearest indication we've had so far that there is going to be possibly a bit more spending power in the budget than we've been expecting. So that project we've been hearing about today, is that new money? Very interesting. I mean, in the manifesto, Labour were talking about using one pound of taxpayers' money to attract three pounds of private sector money. This deal seems to be the exact opposite. They're using almost three pounds of taxpayer money to attract just one pound of private sector money from the likes of BP. And we don't even have the minutiae of the commercial arrangement. It's not till you know how much is coming from the Exchequer, how much is coming from commercial uh, consumer bills from yours and I, and how much is the rate of return for the companies that will truly be able to assess, Jackie, if this represents tax holder value. Elliot, thanks very much.